Welcome, I'm Lauren Lewis. Welcome to our Young Onset Circuit Training class. Before we get started, let me just remind you that this class is designed for people with young onset Parkinson's disease, people with mild symptoms of Parkinson's, people that can exercise comfortably for an hour standing and that can come on and off the floor safely. Please, um, if, you, if you feel you need it, or even if you don't, have a chair nearby just for your safety. You may want to use it for some of our exercises or exercise next to a wall, again, for safety. Um, if you have not warmed up, please stop the tape now. Go do something around your house, a mild, gentle warm-up to get your body prepared. You can also go into our video library and find one of our warm-up videos for our young set onset. Uh, uh, group as well so you have those options for today's class you may want to have some weights nearby I don't suggest heavy weights for some of the exercises we're doing it's uh, you, you we're gonna be doing some rows and some uh, overhead presses and some squats with them so you don't want something too heavy that may put a strain on your back if you do want to add some resistance but don't have weights you can use cans uh, or water bottles, those are great. And uh, you don't have to use any weights at all if you don't want to. I promise you will still get plenty out of this without using any weights. The class will consist of six exercises. Each of these exercises in the circuit are all working on large muscles in the, in the body so that at the end we'll be doing a full body uh, program. We're getting all the, our muscles covered. And each exercise also has a, uh, um, a, a focus on a common symptom of Parkinson's and we'll discuss that as we go through the exercises. Our first exercise in our circuit is a caterpillar with arm extensions. A caterpillar is one of my favorites and I always like to start off with my favorite things. <laughs> okay, this is a true full body exercise. You start off in a full extension, your arms are overhead, your legs can be wide or together, that's really up to you and your level. Come down, you can soften your knees or straighten them. Um, you're going to reach towards your toes. Reach to the floor, here's the caterpillar. You walk forward into a plank position. A plank is a long line. Make sure your shoulders, hips, and ankles are all in one long line. Here's the arm extension. Once your arms are in position and they're directly underneath your shoulders, one arm at a time comes up, straight up, pulling your belly tight, trying to keep your hips from moving right to left. Just hold them in place. And then we finish the caterpillar by walking back, touching those toes or coming near them in any case and come up. You can modify this by doing, um, by, by coming down, bending down and, and walking forward. That's fine. You're still using your core. You're still using all those muscles, keeping those knees bent here. Just make sure when you come up that your head comes up before your, uh, above your heart. So those are some of the modifications. If you want to, you can also do this exercise on the chair. It's slightly different, but it's still getting everything you need to do. You're gonna come down to here. You're gonna walk yourself out, so it's a reverse caterpillar. Then get those arms directly in front. Then walk your feet in, bend your knees, and raise. So you have a lot of options in this, and they're all good. I'm gonna put on our music. We're gonna do this for 50 seconds. Time 50 seconds and then we'll move on to our second exercise. Make sure that you have a nice area to work out in. And here we go. First exercise, caterpillar with arm extension. Up, I'm coming down, walking it forward. Arm extensions, right, left, keeping my hips even. Try not to swing and sway those hips. Full reach up, down and walk it out. The more you do this, you'll find the steadier you become and the, the more limber you will become. And that's important for safety. And there's our timer, coming up. And there we go. All right, I'm gonna see if I can't make that just a little louder. There we go, all right. Second exercise, how'd we do on that one? Pretty good, right? We still have to, we're gonna do it two more times so <laughs> you'll get more used to it. The next exercise we're gonna do is a three o'clock lunge, knee into a nine o'clock lunge with a knee. So here it is, 
starting center, I'm going to go all the way over to 3 o'clock and do a, a, a back lunge. So I'm sitting down. It's really a squat in a squatted position. I'm sitting way back. Knee does not go, o goes, does not go forward. The knee stays in place, and I sit back. And then I come up to a knee, come back down, center. Then I go to 9 o'clock. Big wide step, bending one knee, straightening the middle knee, coming down, reaching toward the floor or the knee. That's fine. Coming up into a knee, back down, and in. 3 o'clock, knee, 3 o'clock, in, 9 o'clock, knee, 9 o'clock, in. 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Now, for those of you that want to make it more fun, you can add a weight. And you're going to use the weight with the opposite hand. 3 o'clock, up, 3 o'clock, switch, 9 o'clock, up, 9 o'clock, switch. Music's going on, timer's going on. I'm going to hold on to the weight because I'm looking for a lot of fun today. Here we go. In place, 3 o'clock. Down, come up. Good. Now you may have to slow this way down. This takes a lot of balance. We're lifting those knees nice and high. We're sitting way back. The muscles we're using on this are glutes, sitting back. A lot of inner thigh. You're going to feel that inner thigh on the leg that's straight. Stretching and using that inner thigh. It's a muscle a lot of people don't necessarily isolate to exercise, but it's a really important muscle when you're talking about the whole balance of the leg. All the way down, make sure that knee does not go in front of the toe. Big wide steps, sitting back, and there's my timer. All right. Next exercise is a runner's lunge. Some of you may know that because you're runners and you know what that is. It's a stretch often done before or after running. But I'm going to take that stretch and make it into a muscular exercise. So you're going to take one leg, doesn't matter which because we're switching, one leg down into a, a lunge position. The front knee is bent. Your back leg is straight once again. Your heel in the back is up so you're on your toe. A runner's lunge is way down here. You're way down and you're really stretching out that flexor. Back is flat. Back is flat. If your back looks like this, then I suggest that you take this and bring it up to here. Put your hands safely on your thigh to help you along with this. Here's the runner's lunge starting position. We go from a runner's lunge to a knee. There's that knee again. Down, switch sides. All the way down, back leg is straight. You're on your toe. You're reaching forward. Chest is over that knee. Lift up and down switch. This requires a lot of balance. <coughs> I'm going to use a chair here next to me to assist to make sure I'm safe and I get through this <laughs> without injuring myself. So I'm going to let that, um, that chair assist me. I'm not going to push off of it. I'm just going to use it for a little, a little assistance. Down, straight down, and lift. Turn it sideways maybe so you can see what I'm really doing. All right, timer's on. Music's on. Here we go. Runner's lunge knee, nice and big. Down, flat back. To a knee, switch legs all the way down. All your weight is on that front heel. So we're working glute. We're working glute right here. That's the major muscle here. You're also going to feel this in your core. A lot of core here. A lot of abs. Flat back, stand tall. All the way down, shoulders over the knee, stand tall. And you can feel that this is no longer a stretch. It's very muscular. Concentrate on keeping that back flat. Try not to round out that back. And there's your time. All right. I'm going to get the chair out of the way. The next exercise we're going to be doing is a plank, a walking plank. And this time, what are we adding? I forgot. We're going to do a walking plank <laughs> with a crossover tap, with a crossover tap. Walking plank, crossover tap. Here it is on the floor. I'm going to show you a, different, a few different ways to do this. So you're going to start off in a walking plank. Plank is right here. Hands are together. Legs are together. Body in a long line. Arms are straight. Walking. We're going to go one step to the right. One step to the right. 
back into a plank. Now, you're gonna take opposites and just touch your knee, touch your knee, back into a full plank, and go the other way. Walk and touch your opposite knee. Walk, touch your opposite knee. You can do this on the floor. You can also do this, the walking can be, can be done walking plank, and you can make it a little more fun by going toward the toe. That's a lot more fun, actually, going toward the toe. Or when you come down, you can just down, down, come back up, walk, or you can just drop one knee at a time. Drop one knee at a time. That's fine, too. All right. You can also, one other option, I'm sorry, but it's really important that I give you as many options so you do what's right for you. You can do this against the wall, the exact same exercise. One step from here, reach for the opposite knee. Take a nice big step here, reach for the opposite knee. Timer's on, music's on, let's have some fun. I'm hitting the floor. Long plank, big step and tap. Big step, tap. The muscles used here, you got it, just about everything. We're working shoulders, strength in arms, biceps, triceps, chest and back. We're stabilizing our hip, working your legs. It's a full body, we got everything going. How we doing? That feels like a long, oh no, timer didn't go off. <laughs> there it is, no, it did go off, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it, I was having too much fun doing my walking planks. Good job, heart rate's up, using all those large muscles. Heart rate's up, good for you. Come on up uh, carefully. This time you may want to use your weights. You don't have to, you can just reach. We're gonna be doing a drop squat, a cross arm drop squat. So you're gonna take those weights and put them in front of your feet. Your feet are about hip distance apart, not too wide, not too narrow. You're gonna do a squat. Again, a squat is a seated position. Your knees are over your ankles, not in over your toes. You're gonna to take your opposite hand, your right hand, to your left, to the left weight. Pick it up in a squatted position, sitting back, head up, chest up, pick it up. Bring it here, lift to a press, and bring it down. And then stand and switch sides. Pull up, I like to do a bicep curl, but you can just pull it up, and drop, stand. Drop, squat, drop, up, and drop it. Stand, reach, lift, press, and drop it. Drop, squat. If you're not holding weights, you touch, come up. Also, <coughs> Any lower back problems or anything, just sit down, stand up, and switch sides. Sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. So you're doing, everything can be done uh, depending on what your ailments are, what you, where you want to challenge yourself. So I'm going to put our music on. Here we go, 50 seconds. We're going to sit, sit down, lift, press, drop it, come up, then we switch. Come up, make sure you're sitting back using our glutes using your biceps and triceps to lift and that overhead shoulder press. When you press overhead, think about pulling your shoulder blades down towards your heels. So now we're also engaging the upper back. So it's again, another full body exercise. We're using all those leg muscles and upper body with the weight, reach. Don't forget to stand in between each one. This also becomes a little cognitive, doesn't it? To remember not to just grab, you have to remember the sequence. And there's your timer. Last exercise. Last exercise, as if we haven't done it yet, is a cardio exercise. We're gonna do football drills. Who doesn't love those? All right, so football drills are right here. Football drills with an up-down, with a floor touch. So football drills, touch, football drill, 
touch, head up, chest up. Or if you want to, you can just shuffle, touch, shuffle, touch. Those are your options. Or you can just shuffle in place, reach. If, again, if you have any lower back issues, reach instead of bending. But you want to change the, uh, the height. Go down or go up. All right, just have some fun with this one. Not a lot to learn on it. We're just moving quickly. Let's get that heart rate up. Down, down. Head up, chest up, don't drop your head. Drop your, bend at the waist. Hinge at the waist, get those knees bending. Use your glutes and quads. I'm gonna change it to a shuffle just to make it a little more interesting for me. Ooh, my heart rate's up. Back to football for me. Woo! Oh, my quads are burning. Time, walk it off, don't stop, don't stop. Get your heart rate down by moving, walking it off, getting your heart rate down slowly and comfortably, safely. Grab some water. We're gonna do those six exercises all over again. This time, each one, following all the instruction I gave you the first time, but this time I'm gonna also tell you what, what the benefit is for Parkinson's so that you can start really focusing on some of those movements as well. All right. Our first exercise was the caterpillar. The benefit here is range of motion. A lot of people lose or don't realize they're losing a diminished range of motion, meaning that your arms feel like you're fully extended here, your legs feel like they're fully extended here, but they're not. So we're reminding the body, retraining the brain, uh, reinforcing those neuropathways to fully extend. We start standing, we come back down, we go into a full extension into a plank, and then we even reinforce it even more by fully extending that arm, reaching and coming back. Remember, by reaching, you're also totally engaging your, uh, your core, your abs. So we're also working on balance, another major symptom of Parkinson's. So everybody find your positioning. Here we go, nice and big. Fully extend that arm. Try not to move those hips. Look to make sure your arms and legs are fully extended range of motion. Think about lengthening those arms, pulling your belly tight, keeping your hips in line. Try not to swing and sway. Keep your eyes on your limbs. Make sure they're fully extended. Think about really lifting. Think about using all those large muscles. Your core is engaged. Your legs and arms are engaged. Time. All right. The next exercise is our three o'clock, nine o'clock lunges. The, uh, the benefit, or the Parkinson's benefit that we're working on is gait. It's lar taking large steps instead of taking small steps. We want to remind the brain to take big, long steps. We're also changing direction. Instead of just going forward and backwards, we're reminding the brain to move in all directions. The added part that it did not, that I said was optional, using the opposite arm, that's also for gait, reminding to use your opposite hand with leg when walking and gait. And that is instrumental in balance and natural walking. All right, here we go. Three o'clock, nine o'clock. I'm gonna add that weight because I love it. From the center, three o'clock. Come up, balance right here. Remember I said balance? Major, major common symptom. So we wanna make sure that we're always working on these various symptoms so we can either delay them completely or at least improve them. Make sure you're sitting back when you take those side lunges. Nice big wide lunge at three o'clock. Big wide lunge again. And then back to that nine o'clock. If 
You don't want to go too fast for these. So that it's not cardio, it's muscular. We're really getting into those, strengthening the leg. There's your time. Runner's lunge is next. The runner's lunge works the exact same thing I just talked about, gait. We're working on balance and gait, trying to remind the body to take full, long, long steps. So we're gonna start down here. We're gonna lift that leg way up, big exaggerated motions. Lift that knee way up, reminding the brain to lift. We're also working balance by standing here. And just as, a, as I said earlier, this is a very strong um, glute, glute exercise, a really strong glute exercise, very difficult. So here we go. OK, it's on now. <laughs> all the way down, flat back, come up to a straight knee, all the way down. Now, you want to make this a little more fun. And if you have good balance, you bring your hands in front of your knee here. Stand up, switch, all the way down, lift up. So you're putting all that pressure on that glute. And for me, I'm just going to make sure that chair is right here for balance, for safety. And there it is. All my weight, front leg, lift. This is the one tomorrow. Tomorrow you're gonna go, what did I do? This is what you did. <laughs> Flat back. Time. I'm gonna get the chair out of my way because walking lunges are next. Walking planks, rather. So the walking plank uses range of motion once again, range of motion, large steps, working on a different plane, working sideways instead of straight ahead. But now we're, in we're including a crossing the midline, so whenever we cross the midline, we're using our brain more fully. So we're using the brain in a more functional, full manner by crossing that midline. And we're going toward the opposite, reminding, again, those contralateral movements, which are so important. All right, hit the floor, walking planks, take one, one each side, touch your knee, touch the floor whichever works for you, or you can just tap the floor. One big step, range of motion, bring it in. Cross and cross, pull your belly tight. Big step, cross to the opposite. Control your hips, don't let them fly up. More fun, go for the toe. A little less challenging, bend each leg. Your choice, stay wet works for you. Time, all right. Be careful on your way up. Make sure your dominant leg is in front of you. Hands are on your thigh. Lift yourself up. Get ready for the drop squat. Once again, another exercise where we're really focusing on gait. We're lifting up those legs. We're uh, strengthening the legs to make sure that we don't lose muscles. In case we start to shuffle, you want to make sure that you're engaging all those muscles to keep them strong. We're also working on lifting, working on um, upper body posture. By lifting one arm up, we're forcing all those uh, uh, muscles in the upper body and that upper back to lift you to s stand tall. This is for posture. Strengthening the muscles in the, in the chest and in the back. So remember, you're sitting back to drop and to squat, but you're lifting overhead. Woo! Here we go. Opposite hand picks it up. Opposite. Pick it up. Overhead press. Drop it to the same side and lift before you drop again. Pick it up, reach all the way overhead, put those shoulder blades down, and switch sides. Up, reach, think about those shoulders, chest, sh arms. Think about sitting back on you when you drop it here, sit back, sit back, and stand tall.
sit back, reach, drop that arm, squeezing your upper back, reach, sit. And time. All right, nice work. That time I'm gonna get my weights out of the way because our last exercise is our cardio exercise. We're gonna do those football drills nice and quick. And this is, go, 50 seconds. The reason for this is cardio. Cardio is really important. <clears throat> what does your brain feed on? Oxygen and blood. We're getting oxygen and blood into the brain. We're feeding it a gourmet meal. So, so move those feet. We're also reminding the body to move quickly. One of the a common symptom of Parkinson's is body starts to move slower. Brady Kinesia. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we're not moving slowly, that we're reminding the brain, triggering all those sensors to move quickly. I forgot to come down and touch the floor. Whew. Get that heart rate up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go. All right, time went by. We did it. Second round, walk it off. Get ready for the third round, last round, final round. Grab some water, wipe off. Get ready for our final round. I'm going to grab some water and get ready. The next round, the next round, I'm going to add the cognitive, the brain game to every exercise. You already know the mi major muscles. You're focusing on the major muscles. You're focusing on exaggerating the, um, the movement to uh, help with your Parkinson's uh, symptoms. And now we're going to add the brain. For every um, exercise, I'm going to give you something else to think about, something a little brain challenge. So for the first one, our caterpillar with arm extensions, I want you to think of things that you normally would take on a trip that you wouldn't go without. Things that you take on a trip, I don't care where you're going, but it's a trip, not you're leaving your home <laughs> for a few days. Things that you would need to take with you, you would not go without, all right? Heart rate should be comfortable again. I'm gonna put our timer and music on and let's get uncomfortable again. <laughs> 50 seconds, caterpillar, Woo! Think about it, things that you take on a trip, don't turn those hips. Don't swing and sway. Touch the toes if you can. Full range of motion. Keep those knees straight right here. Keep them straight. Woo! Second exercise, the next one is our three o'clock, nine o'clock. Every time you go to three o'clock, remember that we're taking large wide steps, we're sitting back, keeping that knee behind your toe and lifting to a balanced position. While you're thinking about all of that, I want you to count by two. Every time you come to this side, two, four, six, stop, and then you're gonna count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, and then you continue here. Eight, 10, 12, okay? So you're counting by twos on one side, counting by fives on the other side. You don't have to count three, you can just count two, five, four, you know, you, you can do it any way you want, but each side, change the counting. All right, here we go. Whew, no weight on this one, I'm just using my body. Three o'clock, switch. Make sure you're taking wide steps, using that opposite hand toward the knee or the floor. Fives on one side, counting twos on the other.
time. All right. Again, because we're using so many large muscle groups, we're not isolating these muscles. Your heart rate's going up um, for each exercise also, in addition to our basic just cardio exercise. So, you know, those are all benefits. The next exercise is our runner's lunge. Those are the ones where you come all the way down, come nice flat back, come up, push on your heel and switch legs. This time, it's a runner's lunge, so I want you to think of uh, other sports. Just running is a sport. Think of any other sport you can. You've got 50 seconds to come up with as many sports as you can while staying safe doing your runner's lunge. 50 seconds. Here we go. Flat back. Stand tall. Flat back. Stand tall. Flat back, straight leg in the back, straight leg. Whoo! Time. Hit the floor for our next exercise. The next exercise are your walking planks. This one, now we're going to do a little spelling, spelling uh, get, quiz. <laughs> but don't worry, it's something I'm pretty sure you can spell. I want you to come on down onto your planks, take your step, exaggerate, uh, extend your arms, and spell your name forwards. Spell it out forwards, and then spell it backwards. And then spell it forwards again, then spell it backwards again. You can do it with each step you take or just when you reach your arms, whatever. But spell your name forwards and backwards. Here we go. Oh, t switch, those are not extensions, not extensions, cross and tap. Big step, cross, cross. Big step, cross. Your pace, not mine. I just wanted to make sure that you didn't forget the crossing like I did. <laughs> Spill your name, touch your toe if you want. There's our time. One leg at a time in front of the other. Standing tall, grab your weights for the drop squat. All right, drop squat, what are we gonna do? We're gonna think of things that you would find on the desk of an office. Just things, things that are normally found on top of a desk. Just as many little common items that you find in an, on an office desk. All right, this should be an easy one. Get those weights. Here we go. 50 seconds. Woo! Drop, squat, drop, pick it up, opposite hand. Reach. Put it down, same side. Stand up and switch. Sit back. Things on an office desk. Make sure you're sitting back. Be good to your body. Time. While it's on my mind, I did forget to mention, and I think it's important that that last exercise, in addition to working all the, the having the benefit of, of range of motion, 
um, working upper body for posture. It also worked on torso uh, rigidity, or, or rather working against rigidity, because it was more fluid motion. You had to lift and rotate in a more fluid motion. So next time you do it, if you do that on your own later in the week, think about also lifting and using that in a more fluid motion as opposed to being too rigid. All right, our last exercise is, as I said, this one, we don't have a cognitive because we're just, re we're just gonna let the brain eat. <laughs> let our brain have a meal. Football runs, out in, out in, touch the floor when you want to. 50 seconds, here we go, run it out. This is your last 50 seconds, so run. Make it hard, make it work. Go for it. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Go, go, go. Chest up, head up. Use those legs faster. Okay, come on, only a few more seconds. Go faster. Use those arms. Go, go, go. Oh! Time, walk it off, walk it off, walk it off. Ah. All right, let's all grab some water. Let's all get our heart rate down nice and safely. Remember to slow your heart down in a safe way. I always like to take one deep breath in and four breaths out. Come on and join me again. Hopefully your heart rate's coming down. Grab a little water and we will cool down together. Just a little reminder for those of you that um, may want to do something in the middle of the week and you don't have a cool down and you don't want to go find the cool down on the end of one of these, we do have in our library some um, videos. They're about five or eight minutes for just cool downs. So you can go for a run or do whatever it is that you do, bicycle ride, swim, come back in uh, and cool down with one of our, our tapes. I'm going to start by um, standing next to the chair, stretching out my quadricep, grabbing hold of my knee, of my knee, of my ankle, dropping that knee to the floor, keeping the other leg nice and soft, standing tall. You want to make sure that this part of your leg, of your body is not bent, you're straight and tall. Bring that leg all the way behind you. If this doesn't work for you, you can always go into just a, a lunge. That back leg is still behind. You're still feeling that nice stretch here, but your weight is not on your front leg. It's on the chair so that you doesn't become muscular, become stretch. All right, nice work. And you want to hold every stretch for at least 15 seconds if we can. That's why I keep yapping to hold this longer. Good. Slide that leg in. Let's do the other leg now. I'm going to grab hold from behind. <clears throat> or you can bring that leg behind you just as we did in the other. Make sure that you're standing tall. The knee is behind you facing. Your kneecap should be facing the floor and you're feeling a great stretch in that quad, the front of your leg, or your back here. Again, feeling a great stretch in the front of your leg. Nice work. Good. Stay right here just for a few more seconds. Good. All right. I'm going to take you down to the floor for a hamstring stretch. Let's come on down. Hamstring, back of leg. We're going to lie down on the floor. One leg is bent. The other leg is straight overhead. This is passive. Um, we're going to hold on to, the, to your th uh, uh, calf. And this is where I want you to stretch, right here, the back of your leg. Just gently bring that leg in toward your body. This leg stays bent. Your neck stays even and down on the floor. You're very comfortable here. If you can, you can straighten that leg. If you feel too much behind the knee, keep it soft and bent. But this is, a, you're getting into the glute a little, but it's mostly hamstring. Stay right here. Nice work. And now, now that we've held that and we've gotten that hamstring, by the way, hamstring is the muscle that we use mostly in, that, in those caterpillars. So we did quite a few of those today. We're going to take that leg and cross it into what's called the number four stretch. So you have a number four right here. And um, your knee stays bent. This knee is out to the side. You can bring this leg in and just hold it here. For some of you, you may be a little more flexible. You can bring that knee way in and you'll feel a great stretch in your glute right here. And we're just going to hold it for about 
15 seconds if we can while I'm yapping, <laughs> the time will go. <laughs> okay, so you're feeling a great stretch here. Nice and easy, your back is flat on the floor and you're just breathing nice and deeply. Let's bring this leg back on the floor and do the same stretches on the other side. You're grabbing hold of the calf, if you can reach the calf, otherwise you can grab hold of your thigh all the way up here and just gently bring it in. While we're stretching, since now you know what to do, I'm just going to have you join me as we work on vocal strength, it's another um, symptom of Parkinson's. So let's just say ooh for about 10 seconds. Ooh. All right, that's also a great way of just using time up while you're stretching, working on your vocal power, working on vocal strength. So we're going to bring that leg over the other leg. Once again, the knee goes out to the side. You're going to lift this leg up to whatever is comfortable for you, 90 degrees if you can or more, and this time we'll say ah, just again to work on our vocals while we're stretching out our glutes. Ah. Great job. All right, so this leg comes down. We're gonna gently and carefully take the, our knees and shoulders together, roll over into the fetal position, and then lift yourself up onto all fours. In this position, we're going to stretch out our shoulders and chest by walking your hands as far forward as you can and dropping your chest forward. Notice that my hips are up in the air. I'm not in, this, um, in a uh, child pose. I'm way up here. This is going to allow me to really drop my chest, stretching out my upper body, my uh, chest, my shoulders, my biceps and triceps. Great upper body stretch. Nice and safe. I'm not yanking or pulling anything. I'm just gently stretching out. Stay right here, let's hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Let's get back up to all fours. Hands are directly underneath your shoulders. Let's tuck our toes underneath your feet and bring yourself up into a downward dog position. Straight legs, chest down, and again, you're pulling away, trying to arch your back, just a little here, arch your back. Let's drop the chin and just shake your head yes, taking all the tension out of your neck and shoulders, and then no. Just re Again, we're just releasing and relaxing all the muscles in your neck and shoulder. Let's walk your hands gently and safely to your toes and releasing your lower back. Gently roll up, let your head fall last, all the way up on top. All right, arms all the way overhead, full body extension. Lengthen and reach every muscle in your body. Feel it all contracting and lifting. Drop your shoulders. We're going to extend those arms to your side, stretching. And let me just say thank you so much for joining me today. A nice big yay for you. Ready? Yay! All right. I hope you had fun today. Give me a nice big thumbs up if you did. Let us know that you enjoyed it. If you have not subscribed yet, it doesn't cost you a cent. Just press that blue button at the bottom of your screen. That will help other people, young onset, help other people find uh, the, these videos because there's not a lot out there for young onset. So we want to make sure we're reaching as many people as we can. Have a great week. Have a safe week. And I will see you next week.